This water was contaminated with deadly bacteria five minutes ago. Now it's purer than most tap water. No chemicals, no electricity, no industrial filters. Just three purification systems that medieval villages developed when contaminated water killed more people than battles and epidemics combined. While entire cities succumbed to cholera and dysentery, monasteries and rural communities prospered using this ancestral technology that transformed any source into safe drinking water. Today, we're going to learn about three medieval purification systems that still outperform modern technology in extreme situations, and you can replicate all of them with materials found in any city. Cloth Prefiltration – The First Barrier Against Death Linen cloth represented the first line of defense against death by contaminated water in medieval monasteries. While villagers died from devastating intestinal diseases, Cistercian monks developed this pre-filtration system that instantly removed visible particles and coarse sediments. This was the mandatory first stage before any other treatment. Turbid water indicated dangerous contamination that could eliminate entire communities. Medieval travelers never drank water without passing it through cloth First, carrying pieces of linen specifically for this purpose during journeys through territories where sources were questionable. The monasteries used multi-stage systems where water passed sequentially through different cloths at progressively lower heights. This gravity-fed design ensured constant flow and gradual purification, a principle we can perfectly replicate today using simple materials. Let's build the modern medieval system. Cut three petit bottles or use three containers of your choice. Position them at different heights. The container with the dirtiest water should be at the highest point, the intermediate container in the middle, and the container for purified water at the lowest level. Connect the containers using strips of white cotton or linen cloth. One end of the cloth goes from the first container to the second, and a second strip connects the second to the third. The cloth functions as a filtration bridge that allows water to flow naturally by gravity through the fibers. This stepped system works through the principle of combined capillary action and gravity. The height difference creates hydrostatic pressure that forces water through the cloth fibers, while capillary action ensures constant flow without need for pumping. Each passage through cloth removes more impurities than the previous stage. When contaminated water is placed in the upper container, it automatically begins flowing through the first cloth to the intermediate container, where it becomes temporarily cleaner. Then it flows through the second cloth to the final container, emerging significantly purer than the original water. The stepped height is crucial because it creates pressure differential that maintains continuous flow. Without this elevation difference, water wouldn't flow efficiently through the cloths. The greater the height difference, the more gravitational force drives the filtration process. The system works through progressive physical filtration. Each cloth removes different types of contaminants. The first cloth captures coarse sediments and visible debris. The second cloth refines filtration, removing smaller particles that pass through the first stage. The result is dramatically clearer water. But before we advance to the monumental systems of the monasteries, we need to witness something that will completely change your understanding of natural filtration. Primitive water filter, the discovery that challenges everything. Bushcrafter Clay Hayes rediscovered an ancestral technique that our ancestors used millennia before the Middle Ages, filtration through living branches. This modern discovery scientifically validated knowledge that primitive tribes preserved for generations. Plants can purify water through their own vascular systems. Hayes demonstrated using cut grapevine to siphon and filter contaminated swamp water, transforming it into crystal clear drinking water. The secret lies in maintaining the vine's natural orientation to simulate the water flow the plant would use in life. The branch functions as a natural straw, Contaminated water enters one end and emerges filtered from the other. The laboratory results were impressive. Raw swamp water contained 43.6 MPN of E. coli, significant contamination that would cause severe illness. After filtration through the grapevine, samples revealed less than 1 MPN of E. coli, essentially undetectable. 
Hayes also tested a secondary filter built with a Cypress branch to compare performance. Although not laboratory tested due to cost, similar filtration efficacy was expected based on the same biological principles. The taste test revealed subtle differences. Grapevine filtered water maintained a slight chlorophyll flavor, while Cypress filtered water presented a neutral taste like bottled water. This technique works, but Hayes emphasizes important limitations. Viruses may not be filtered, and environmental factors like drought affect efficacy. It's essential to use healthy branches from plants with active growth for optimized flow and filtration. Complete testing is necessary to ensure absolute safety. Clay Hayes's complete video will be in the description, a fascinating experiment that connects modern science with ancestral wisdom. But now, let's explore how medievals took filtration to a completely different level. Slow Sand Filtration System The Hydraulic Engineering of Monasteries while villagers died from contaminated water, Cistercian monks developed slow filtration systems using sand layers and stone cisterns that purified thousands of liters daily. These monasteries possessed the purest water sources in medieval Europe, sustaining entire communities during epidemics that devastated nearby regions. It was the living water system that allowed prosperity when others perished. The Cistercians created the first documented slow filtration systems in history, adapting regional techniques with available local materials. Each monastery developed variations based on the region's geological resources, but basic principles remained universal. Multiple specialized layers created progressive purification. Let's build three different versions from basic to advanced, using materials you can find in any city. Basic version, pet bottle system. 30 minutes. Cut a large pet bottle and invert it to create a filtration funnel. Drill small holes in the cap. These holes control water flow and prevent filtration materials from escaping. The size of the holes determines filtration speed and retention of internal layers. The first layer uses coarse gravel that functions as structural support and initial drainage. This base prevents upper layers from mixing and ensures uniform flow through the system. Add a layer of activated charcoal that removes chemical contaminants and improves taste through adsorption. Add multiple layers of gravel in decreasing grain sizes, followed by coarse sand. This material progression creates increasingly refined physical filtration, complete with a final layer of fine sand, the most critical component of the medieval system that creates microscopic filtration. Intermediate version, transparent container system, one hour. Use a large glass container to observe each layer functioning during the filtration process. Start with coarse gravel drainage at the base. Add activated charcoal followed by multiple sand layers in progressively smaller grain sizes. This system processes larger volumes of water and allows complete visualization of the purification process. The layers are clearly visible through the glass, demonstrating how each stratum contributes to progressive filtration that reproduces original monastic systems. Advanced version. Multiple container system. Two hours. Mount a system of two connected containers that allows complete observation of the process. The upper container holds all filtration layers, while the lower container collects purified water. This configuration more faithfully reproduces medieval cistern systems. When contaminated water is poured into the system, each layer removes different types of impurities through specific mechanisms. Gravel removes coarse sediments through physical filtration. Activated charcoal eliminates chemical contaminants and odors through adsorption. Sand layers filter microscopic particles through progressive size exclusion. Slow filtration allows biological processes to develop in the upper sand layers. Beneficial bacteria form biofilm that consumes pathogenic bacteria, creating biological purification beyond physical filtration. This process, known as Schmutzdecke, was the secret of the most effective monastic systems. The result is crystal clear water that emerges slowly from the system, purified through multiple simultaneous mechanisms that reproduce exactly the processes that kept medieval monasteries free from waterborne diseases. Monks meticulously documented these systems because pure water was literally a matter of community life or collective death. Monasteries that mastered slow filtration prospered during epidemics. 
communities that depended on contaminated sources disappeared completely. Medieval hot stone boiling, the ancestral liquid fire. Long before monasteries mastered filtration, long before metal was accessible to the common population, our ancestors developed a revolutionary method to purify water through superheated stones. This pre-medieval technique continued throughout the Middle Ages because it worked when fire-resistant containers were an inaccessible luxury for most families. This was an emergency method for rapid purification when metal containers were rare or too expensive. Peasant families depended on this technique because metal pots cost the equivalent of months of work. It was the difference between purified water and death from intestinal disease for millions of people. Preparation requires careful selection of non-porous stones to avoid dangerous explosions. Archaeological images reveal how ancestral ceramics fragmented when the technique was poorly executed. Porous stones contain internal moisture that expands violently when heated, causing explosive fragmentation that can cause serious injuries. Heat multiple stones in an intense fire for at least one hour. The flames must completely envelop the stones until they glow red even during daylight, visual indication that they've reached adequate temperature for sterilization. This extreme heating ensures stones maintain sufficient heat to bring water to complete boiling point. Use a natural container made from large leaves, an ancestral technique that demonstrates our ancestors' genius. Banana leaves or similar can be molded into a natural bowl format that resists heat long enough for purification. This organic solution was widely available and completely sustainable. Uh, develop green wood tongs for safe handling of superheated stones. Green branches from resistant trees can be molded into tong format that allows precise transfer of hot stones without risk of serious burns. This improvised tool was essential for safe coordination of the process. When a superheated stone is submerged in water using wooden tongs, boiling begins instantly with intense steam that indicates adequate temperature to eliminate all pathogens. The dramatic steam demonstrates that water has reached lethal temperature for bacteria, viruses, and parasites through complete thermal sterilization. Multiple stones may be necessary to maintain boiling for sufficient time for absolute sterilization. Remove used stones with tongs and add freshly heated stones to prolong the purification process. This rotation of hot stones maintains lethal temperature for the period necessary for complete microorganism destruction. The efficacy surpasses many modern methods because it reaches temperatures that completely destroy cellular structures of all known pathogenic microorganisms. While some modern filters allow passage of smaller viruses, hot stone boiling guarantees absolute thermal sterilization that eliminates 100% of biological contaminants. From contamination to medieval purity, this water was contaminated with sediments, bacteria, and visible impurities 20 minutes ago. Now observe the complete transformation through sequential application of the three medieval systems we built from scratch. First, cloth pre-filtration instantly removes coarse particles and visible sediments. The visual change is dramatic. Turbid water becomes transparent in seconds, exactly as medieval monks observe daily. This initial clarification prepares water for deeper purification. Second, slow sand filtration eliminates microscopic contaminants through multiple specialized layers that reproduce Cistercian systems. Each layer removes different types of impurities, creating progressive purification that rivals modern industrial treatment plants. Third, Medieval hot stone boiling ensures complete thermal sterilization, eliminating all pathogens that survived previous processes through the same method our ancestors used before advanced metallurgy. This thermal purification offers absolute safety against all waterborne diseases. Direct comparison demonstrates superiority in specific situations where modern technology fails. Commercial filters clog with heavy sediments. Electrical systems stop during blackouts. Chemicals run out during prolonged emergencies. Medieval methods work indefinitely using only natural materials available in any environment. This knowledge crossed centuries because it works independent of external conditions or industrial infrastructure. Cistercian monks used these systems 800 years ago. Pre-medieval ancestors mastered stone boiling for millennia. The science behind remains valid, purification through physical, biological, and thermal sterilization. Modern systems offer convenience and speed. 
but medieval methods offer absolute reliability when convenience fails. This water was purified using only materials anyone can obtain anywhere in the world. No commercial filter offers this total independence. No electrical system works without infrastructure. No modern technology operates indefinitely without maintenance or resupply. Practical applications are infinite. Emergency preparation when infrastructure collapses. Off-grid living without external dependency. Adventure travel through remote regions. Scientific education about purification principles. And development of ancestral skills that can save lives when modern civilization fails. The next time your municipal water is interrupted by natural catastrophes, when commercial filters fail in extreme situations, or when you're truly isolated from modern infrastructure, this medieval technology can be the difference between health and serious illness. The knowledge that kept our ancestors healthy for millennia still works perfectly today. These techniques will continue purifying water as long as there's cloth to filter, sand to stratify, and stones to heat. 800 years later, there's still superior technology for independent purification in situations where modern convenience doesn't exist. Our ancestors knew something worth rediscovering. If this content changed your perspective on water purification, subscribe to the channel for more ancestral techniques that still outperform modern technology. Share this video with those who need to be prepared when convenience fails. Our ancestors survived millennia. Now you can too.